Oi oi, my name's Culture Hash and today we're going to review the new album from Royal Kana, Not Waving, But Drowning. Royal Kana is a rapper from South London. He's primarily influenced by the boom bap style of 1990s hip hop and takes inspiration from the more conscious and alternative acts like Most Def, Tribe Called Quest and The Far Side. As a result of these influences, Royal Kana's music is seen as a bit more highbrow than the majority of UK hip hop and he's known as a bit of a thinking man's rapper. Due to the influence of golden age hip hop, Royal Kana avoids some of the more trendy hip hop sounds that we're hearing a lot more in the UK. He doesn't sing on any of his tracks, he doesn't use auto tune and there's definitely no experimentation with Afrobeat sounds. Instead, it's very big boom bap drums on here. A lot of the tracks are piano led and sort of like ballads. Royal Kana's style is very sensitive and confessional and primarily deals with his personality, his family life and his emotions. And that's not to say that the likes of Stormzy and Dave don't make intelligent music, but Royal Kana's music sort of strips away a lot of the bravado that makes up some of these artists' output and instead Royal Kana primarily focuses on themes like family and mental illness. As a result of this reputation, Royal Kana's debut album, Yesterday's Gone, received much critical acclaim and was actually voted the best album of 2017 by The Independent. As a result of this critical success, Yesterday's Gone also received a Mercury Prize nomination and peaked at number 14 in the UK Albums Chart. This critical acclaim almost certainly was the main driving factor in Yesterday's Gone achieving a top 20 place in the UK Albums Chart. The album didn't produce any singles that hit the top 40 and Yesterday's Gone wasn't really a commercial facing album. We didn't have any like sexy hooks or big R&B names featured on here. This was just a thinking man's hip hop album and it stuck to its lane very effectively and didn't really deviate in the sounds that would really be appealing to the commercial charts. I was a bit underwhelmed by Yesterday's Gone. I feel like Royal Kana's a bit like J. Cole in that I like his raps, I really like the beats he chooses to rap over, but I've always felt like there was something missing in his style. There was something that really didn't captivate me about Royal Kana or Yesterday's Gone. And I feel like Royal Kana doesn't really have an energy to really grip you and compel you as a listener to pay attention to him. Royal Kana mainly raps over piano led beats. There's usually big boom bap drums on there, but the majority of the focus is on these piano keys. And as a result of this, his flow feels quite slowed down and it doesn't really capture your attention because he just sort of raps, just talks over it, just in quite a mid-tempo, like low pitch voice. And it just doesn't really, you know, like captivate the listener. And I like what he has to say, but I feel like he could be a bit more gripping as a rapper in the way that he delivers his bars, you know? And I feel like these criticisms can also be applied to not waving but drowning. And despite that, I do feel like Yesterday's Gone was the superior project from Royal Kana. He's a good storyteller and central to Yesterday's Gone is his relationship with his mother. She also, she reads a poem to Loyal at the end and there are several vocal snippets that appear throughout the album to sort of emphasise Loyal Kana as a person and give a bit more detail into what he does on his day to day. These vocal snippets do a good job of humanising him and give you a greater understanding of Loyal Kana as a person. He really gets deep into the family stuff here. He talks about the formative relationships with his parents and his stepfather who died a few years ago. And for the most part, Yesterday's Gone is emotive and avoids some of the rap cliches about like going out drinking and girls and all that. And despite my reservations about Royal Kana's energy on the mic, I did feel like Yesterday's Gone was an enjoyable project and he is a rapper that has something positive to say. Not Waving But Drowning follows almost the exact same formula as Yesterday's Gone. I think the beats on Drowning are a little bit better Tracks like Ice Water I really enjoy. I think it's quite a nice little throwback to the RZA style of production for the early Wu-Tang albums. But Drowning also has the same vocal snippets at the end of several tracks. 
It also closes with his mother doing another poem. This one about how he's sort of matured since the last album. It reminds me of when Common used to do that on some of his early albums as well, closing it with a poem from his own father. And I certainly appreciate this homage to classic Common albums, but I don't feel like Drowning really evolves Royal Karna's sound enough here. His family is still a central theme on this album. This family theme can be observed on the very first track, Dear Jean, where Royal Karna raps about how he's moving out of the family home and going to move in with his girlfriend. This is a minimal piano-led beat with a very soft amount of percussion on here. Royal Karna also uses this beat on the final track, Dear Ben, which is the aforementioned poem from his mother. There aren't many rappers that would make tracks about moving out of your mum's house and the conflicting emotions that brings. However, Royal Karna isn't like most rappers and I do appreciate his unconventional subject matter. On track two, Angel, Royal Karna addresses what he's up to at the moment, how his life has changed since the release of his successful debut album. The production, as you'd expect, a few little synths and very soft percussion. This is the style for the majority of his beats. And again, he adopts his like very soft-spoken, quite slow, slow down flow here. And Angel is a good example of why I never really got too into Loyal Karna because it is just a bit slow, it's not very gripping. I feel like we need a bit more excitement here. We then transition into track three, Ice Water. This is a great beat, one of the best on the album. I love those 1990s drums on here, and I really like just the vocals that have been chopped into the background of this beat. It's, these, it's those high-pitched, sped-up, soulful vocals that you just hear on like early Wu-Tang and early Kanye West. And of course, Ice Water, is a reference to the Raekwon track of the same name off his debut album, Only Built For Cuban Links. But I'm disappointed in this track, and I feel like Loyal Karna really wastes this fantastic beat that he's been given. And I think Loyal Karna's got some nice bars on here. He makes a veiled reference to the Raekwon track, Ice Cream, which is quite clever. But his lack of energy just doesn't really grip this track, and his vocals just wash over you, and you just appreciate the beat more than what's being said over the top of it. Desolale, I think that's how you pronounce it, is a collaboration with Sampha. Shockingly, the beat is led by a soft piano and really minimal and sparse percussion. The beat is very minimal even by this album standards and it feels quite sluggish and slow. The two artists create a gloomy soundscape on this track, but it's largely forgettable and one you'll probably skip as you go through the album on a second or third listen. One of the more enjoyable tracks on this album is Crispy. Quick aside here, Crispy spelt with a K, probably a reference to Crispy Creams. Loyal Khan has actually named two tracks on this album after Chefs, Ottolenghi and Carluccio. So it suggests to me that Crispy will probably be a Crispy Cream reference and just builds into this idea of food because Loyal Khan is quite into food. In fact, the track Carluccio is based around a hook where he says we were doing this on the day Carluccio died. Both Carluccio and Ottolenghi are interesting, introspective tracks, and the same can be said for Crispy. Crispy's production features the same three hallmarks we've heard before. Minimal, piano-led, soft percussion. On Crispy, Loyal Karna addresses his relationship with Rebel Clef, a producer slash rapper who produced four tracks on Yesterday's Gone. Rebel Clef is also featured on Drowning, but the nature of Crispy suggests that this was recorded before they had a big falling out. On Crispy, Loyal Karna talks about their relationship and how it soured after Loyal became a bit more famous and got a bit more money. There's some nice lines on here. I like how he references Pete Rock and CL Smooth's They Reminisce Over You. And quite interestingly, he leaves the beat going towards the end as a way for Rebel Clef to add his rebuttal to the track. Rebel Clef is actually featured on You Don't Know, one of the singles from this album. And it has quite a fun little video. We see Loyal Karna's mum going on a series of dates and he's just standing there watching, just being disapproving. It's definitely worth checking out and You Don't Know is one of the more enjoyable tracks from this album. I think the beat on this track is great. I love the big drums on here. It's a mid-tempo track and it suits Loyal Karna's slow delivery quite well actually. And I think Rebel Clef's got quite a nice verse on here. It's nice to see them interact in the video and it shows that they've got a good amount of chemistry together. So it would be nice if Royal and Rebel Clef do actually reconcile in the future. 
Loose Ends is a beautiful collaboration between Royal Karna and Georgia Smith. We hear Royal Karna do a real deep dive into his adolescence and wish that he had the support then that he has now. I feel like Loose Ends is the sort of track that Royal Karna does the best. Those deep introspective dives into his life. But I feel like the biggest hindrance to not waving but drowning is the over-reliance on these piano-led soft beats. But when the energetic beats do come in, and there are more energetic beats than on Yesterday's Gone, I feel like Loyal Karna doesn't adjust his flow enough and really just grab these tracks like they should be grabbed. And he relies on this slowed down flow that can just get a bit washed away in the more energetic beats. But having said that, the Sail Away freestyle is probably the best example of Loyal Karna really just grabbing one of these great beats by the horns. I love the soft electric guitar and big boom bap drums on this track. It's a nice slice of just chilled, laid back hip hop reminiscent of the first Souls of Mischief album. It feels like a sunny update on 90s hip hop. And I love at the end when the beat just slows down, becomes a bit chopped up and just nicely closes out with a great instrumental. There's a little spoken word outro, sounds like gigs, just giving some advice to Loyal Karna, just do your thing, just keep going, ignore the haters. And these little outros just make the album and give it a little bit of structure. Tracks like It's Coming Home don't really add anything musically to the album, but give a little bit more depth to Loyal Karna's character on here. In this example, this is the World Cup penalty shootout that England won, and Loyal Karna just records his family's reaction to it. He's telling his mum about how penalty shootouts work at the start, and then the goal goes in, and everyone just celebrates. The ending monologue on Loose Ends also explains the album's concept, how there was a man in the water, and everyone thought he was waving to people, but he was actually drowning. This is a metaphor for people you think are fine, they're doing well, and in fact, they're struggling mentally. Mental health is something that Loyal Karna really emphasises on this album, and it really makes sense for this to be the theme of the album. It's all about how the surface persona that many people portray might not be as cheery as we might perceive. Overall, Not Waving But Drowning is a pretty decent effort from Loyal Karna. I feel like it's a bit too similar to Yesterday's Gone to really enjoy it much more than that. I felt like Yesterday's Gone was a bit fresher in the ideas, and repeating a lot of these on Not Waving But Drowning is a bit of a cop-out really. I wasn't fond of how similar a lot of the beats on this album were, and again, I felt like Loyal Karna's flow and energy don't really grip the listener on this project. He has got some interesting things to say, and he's got some nice wordplay throughout this album, but it didn't really grip me, and I'd rather listen to Yesterday's Gone for a more concise taking of this style that Loyal Karna has. Going forward, I feel like Loyal Karna needs to mix things up a little bit and reinvent this formula and style that he's got going on. But I feel like fans of his would really enjoy this project and I like how Loyal Karna is very honest and emotionally naked throughout. Overall, for me, I feel like Not Waving But Drowning is worthy of... 5 out of 10.